Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the June 28th through July 3rd recap of General Hospital. This week we talked about Sonny's Kids, or we watched Sonny's Kids, rather. Now I'm sad that it was July 4th and they couldn't do any of their July 4th stuff. Oh, yeah. The whole park and fireworks. That makes me sad. And did nothing happen with Sonny's Kids for July 4th? They should have recapped on that. There was good scenes of July 4th through the years. They should have totally done that. This week, we're also going to be watching Sonny's Kids, I think. Oh, I think it's two weeks of Sonny's Kids. Okay. Which I I think they did a good job. I agree. It was a good week. I still wish that they would keep it a little more consistent because the first episode was in January of 2010. The next one was in June. So you were still following some of the basic same Mm -hmm. storylines. And then they jumped to 14, 15, 16. And it was, wait, wait, wait. I wasn't ready for a whole year skip. All right, so starting in January 29th, 2010, when'd you write? This is when Michael was portrayed by Drew Garrett and Lulu was by Julie Berman. Aww. So if you listen to our two part series on Dante slash Dominic, I do think a few of these were the episodes that I, I mean, they were the episodes that I watched. But it was nice because some of the clips, so we talked about the christening. So this was the one where Sonny shot yes. Dante. Yes. Okay? But the christening, if, it, if Dante wasn't in it, it wasn't in my clips. So I didn't remember Lady Jane was there. Yes. And I loved her. Yes. Where's that tree? I don't know. Probably planted at Carly's house. Who's living in Carly's house? I don't know. Why doesn't Michael live in Carly's house? Oh. Yeah. I don't understand. Maybe it's Jax. No, because he... Hmm. When he left, Carly still lived there. Yeah. Or Jax could have moved back into it. Right. Instead of... Yeah. Is she renting it out? I don't know. Because we see no scenes there. And that house was really pretty. It was. But I'm assuming the tree's there. Well, so I said they need to get Joss's senior portraits by it. (gasps) That would be so cute. Wouldn't it? Oh, you're so smart. I was thinking about that. Aww. I was like, because, you know, how much could it have done in 10 years? Right. Well, she said that it grows five feet a year. (laughs) Okay, hold it. It has to stop (laughs) at some point here. It's not a redwood, you know. (laughs) My first note was... Lulu is Jocelyn's godmother, LOL, because you told me that and I had no idea. Yep. So it was cute to see it. So that was everything that I was talking about with how like nervous she was and how. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it made sense seeing it play out that she knew Dominic was not Dominic. Yep. Liz actually apologized. I liked the way that Lulu teared into her, though, and called her trash. It wasn't very nice, but it felt appropriate. My entire sentence was, Liz actually apologized. Luke was so kind and Lulu so fierce. Yes. Luke really was so kind to her, though. He was. Like, he's, he even said, you're not my favorite person right now, but we right. all make mistakes. So Yeah, Luke doesn't have much room to judge. Mm. So, But it was good of him to know that, because sometimes you don't. I loved Lucky's line, large poor Charles gatherings rarely end well. Mm-hmm. Potential for disaster is astronomical. I thought it was weird that Carly went over to tell Sunny to behave. That was a weird vibe to me. Yeah, but I feel like if we had watched leading up to it, Maybe, but if I was Jax, I would be angry. It's our daughter's christening day, and you're leaving to go talk to your ex-husband. He didn't know that that's where she was going, though. But, but so, I mean, come on. Yeah. Did you really have to guess where she was going? Right. And if you invited Sonny, then hopefully he already knows. I don't have to call you every Sunday morning and tell you, hey, we're going to church. Make sure you behave. Right. 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 So why do I have to tell you that if you're going to a christening? I don't know. I just didn't like it. Olivia, because she knew about Dante and mm-hmm. all that, I got it. But Carly, it just felt weird. Yeah. And then I just said that they really like doing something good and bad at the same time. This was very similar to the Brenda Jack's wedding and mm-hmm. Lily getting blown up. Yes. So. Yeah, they dragged that christening out. I don't. I think I've seen another one where they went through all of the traditional steps. Mm-hmm. But Jax and Carly were christening just, just as Sunny shot Dante. And Olivia had her big overreaction. That was not an overreaction. I, I feel all like... All right, I'll go shoot Matt and you let me know how that works out. I feel like the reaction to my child being shot would be a huge reaction. I felt like the way she said it was, I don't know, not pre-planned because obviously you don't think that someone's going to shoot your kid, but... You just shot your son. I don't know. It was over dramatic. I thought it was good. I don't know. Probably because she's been 
trying to keep the peace and be protective of him without saying, oh, yeah, that's my son and your son, you know, because like he didn't know that he was Olivia's son either at that time. Right. So it wasn't until because Sonny knew Dante's name. Mm -hmm. Right. But not. No, it went with the scene. I'm not saying it was bad acting. I just felt like it was a lot. My question is, though, why didn't they just, you know, find out, have Spinelli do his stuff and find out that Dominic is Dante? Right. They don't use Spinelli the ways that they should. I don't know. Besides, I mean, Monday wasn't boring, but that was pretty much it. Christening, Dante shot, Mm -hmm. overdone. Well, this is when, and this is when Dante was still Dominic. Yes. Sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. I wrote that. I was like, Dante (laughs) was still Dominic. And this is what I talked about in Dante part one from June 25th. Okay. Yeah. But then the next day was June 4th, 2010 what we watched on Tuesday. I wanted to punch Brooklyn in the face for Lulu. And so I know over the top. Yes, I know. Oh, that she was he's sent. allergic to goldenrod. Yeah. I know she was sent there by Carly. So she was trying extra hard. But I, I just wanted to punch her. I don't know who, how Lulu was so nice. I know you want to impress your mother-in-law or boyfriends. But they weren't married yet. Right? No, they weren't even engaged okay. yet. No. So hopefully, mother-in-law, someday you want to impress her. But mm-mm, I had to punch Brooke in the face. But Olivia was kind and wasn't. Right, she was trying stereotypically. To pull Lulu. Yes, stereotypically Italian mothers. What from what you see on TV? Right. Stereotypically, Hollywood portrays an Italian mother as looking down on a woman who can't cook. Right. For her man. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. maybe Olivia is the actual portrayal of like it's okay if she can't cook. Right. It's not like she can't learn. Right. Or even if she doesn't want to, it's okay because Olivia loves cooking for him. Exactly. So yeah, that would be the best setup. Sure, you can feed my man and I get to eat some too. Heck yeah. Thanks. But Christina and Sunny in therapy was awesome. That was awesome. So good because Sunny, oh, and it, it did exactly like we said, you know, abuse is not always physical. Mm-hmm. And people don't realize the strength of their words. Right. You know, and especially in relationships of any kind, you know, and you say that stuff, it's, it's abuse. Yes. Because we just talked about that when we talked about something with Car- Sonny. Was it actually when we basically talked about Sonny and how nasty he was to women? I think so. Yeah. Because I mean. Right. Because we talked about how he is so anti-abuse, but he is abusive with his women at times. Yeah. I loved the end when he asked Carly and she was like, do you really want an right. answer to this? Don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. Mm. Yeah. That was That was good. so good. And the therapist basically telling Sonny, you know, but he also had his reason why, because the type of abuse that he witnessed was so different than what he was doing. Right. And not that there's ever an excuse for abuse, but Claudia wasn't very nice to him either. That was an abusive relationship on both sides. It was give and take verbally. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Right. Absolutely not trying to excuse it, but they didn't bring any of that up when they were testifying about how he treated Claudia. Right. So, no, I hear what you're saying. Like, it's not, it's hard not to get nasty. She didn't deserve to die. Right. She didn't deserve to die and she didn't deserve that treatment. But when someone's speaking to you that same way, it's hard not to come back at them with those same type of words. But for him to say after she was dead, she got what she deserved. That was That's absolutely absolutely horrible. Yep. But I like that they just brought that because Kiefer beat the crap out of Christina. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and she could very easily be dismissive of emotional and verbal abuse because of the type of abuse she received. Right. Just like Sonny was. But she was saying, no, dad, you're just as bad. Like you treat your woman like crap. Yeah. You know, and for all she knows, he could have been hitting women behind right. the scenes and hiding it. Yep. So. No, that was a good scene. I agree. Yeah. It was nice to see Maya Ward. Mm-hmm. Was she the last ward that we ever had on? Because didn't she just leave? Mm-hmm. I don't think we we had one after her. I don't think so either. That would be a good storyline. They mm-hmm. should have bring some, back the words. Some grandchildren, great grandchildren. Well, that's what everyone wanted with Trina. Make Trina a ward. Yes, that would have been awesome. And Luke and Tracy locked up in the dungeon in Greece. That was awesome. They were just torturing each other. Yes. She has a headache. He's screaming for stuff. Right. <laughs> Let us out of here. I didn't really have a lot to um, say about Tuesday. The last thing I had was Carly trying to trap Dante for sending Michael <gasps> away. Yeah. And Olivia straight up knew who her and Spinelli were talking about. Mm-hmm. We should just do an entire 411 on Spinelli's nicknames. Yes. We yeah. can just translate them all. I like that. <gasps> that could be a game we play. Oh, my. We could write, We could have them all written down. We could have my husband look them all up, and we'd have to guess who they are. There you go. Or we can play with our fans, and we figure out a way to do it. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to be thinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So Wednesday jumped all the way to November 7th, 2014. That was when Nina was crazy. We were just talking about that the other day. Now she's the strong businesswoman. But when she first came out of that coma, she was losing it for the next couple of years. We were talking about Rick. Maybe that was whenever we were talking about her being married to Rick. Maybe. I don't know. We talked too much General Hospital. I can't remember what. But it was nice to see it because we had referenced when she wasn't acting right. And that was when she kidnapped Avery. I miss her friendship with Franco. Yeah, me too. They don't do that any. Mm-hmm. It's like they're they're not close. No. I forgot that Felicia ran for mayor. Yes. That was good. I did say that Michael is such a good big brother. If AJ hadn't been killed, Avery wouldn't even be here. And he doesn't hold it against her or struggle with it. I hadn't really thought about that. Like, he oh, loves his yeah. sister. That would be really easy to... I mean, he, I think he would love her no matter what. To But, but to have a little bit of hurt and spite in there. Right. Like, you're only here because my dad died. Because my father killed my dad. Or my dad killed my father whichever way you want to say it (laughs) you know that's yeah yeah i wish they would have showed where franco exposed everything like show the wedding yes we saw the next day in the aftermath of all of it like i don't know that in port charles time it was the next day but you know what i mean we didn't get to see it actually happen that would have been a better scene i think but good news we're going to talk about franco and carly's relationship on a 411 we're going to get so lost in youtube for that yep it's going to be we're going good to time. stick to it as best we can just oh, their relationship and okay. we're not going to do deep dives cuz we only have until we only have a little bit of time to do it because it wasn't until that popped up that we're like oh maybe we should talk about that that a lot of people I mean, t- it's been six years ago right didn't realize that franco and carly were together i did write down that sonny slept with his son's girlfriend on the grave of another son's father wow yeah that's gross it's so gross it's so gross the fact that they didn't know if avery was sonny or morgan's that's so gross mm-hmm. i know they have to keep it crazy because it's a soap but sometimes they just push the ick factor a little too much. Well, we just need some new characters. Mm, I agree. And Michael Easton with Silas. Mm. I loved Bobby and Lucy. Yes. Going at it. Yes. I would like to see more of that. They need to use the old time characters. Because they've always had that spunk. Like, Lucy's always caused mm-hmm. issues with everybody. Yeah. And held her own. And it's cute. And Bobby is no wallflower either. Like, nope. come on. Nope. It's like Monica and Leslie. Yes. You know, they still have their spite. Right. It would make it way more interesting. But then it showed Duke and Anna, and those are old timers that I'm over. <laughs> well, good news. He died in a couple episodes later. He so. did, but it's good because uh, just that argument. Not good news, good news, but yeah. no, you know what? I knew what you meant. But no, that conversation where she's like whining at him. Why did you pick the organization or pick Sunny or whoever over me? Blah, blah, blah. That doesn't feel like Anna to me. Yeah. And being that... I forget everything that was going on. Because remember, there was also that period of time where Cesar was Duke. Yes. Was this Cesar Duke or was that Duke Duke? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. I didn't go off the... Duke changing how he behaves because he's not actually Duke makes sense. But Anna changing how she behaves does not make sense. And she's not that... She may be that sad, like, I'm going to go home and drink a bottle of wine and cry over you, but I'm not going to show you that I need to go home and drink a bottle of wine and cry over you. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. (laughs) Okay. No, I'm just thinking, I'm like, you know, but we all have that person that cuts the deepest, and maybe that's Duke. See, in my mind, that's Robert for her, so. Oh, see, I think that she could just tell him off. Yeah. She she wouldn't get hurt by him. She gets hurt by him, but she lets him know. Yeah. Yeah. But she never does it in a begging to love me kind of way. Okay. Okay. I see. Yep. There. I got it. (laughs) Maybe I overanalyzed that a little bit, but okay. And then that was the day that Michael had the gun on Sunny. Yeah. Was getting into all that. Well, and it was the day that Avery was born. Yeah. 
Oh, see, I hadn't, like, obviously. Because, yeah. Well, it may have been. Because Ava was behind him saying that he forced me into labor and then Nina stole the baby. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Another good and bad happening at the same time. Just the not in that, but not in that same montage no. way, though. No. No. They don't do that all the time. I mean, they do it often, but not, not every time. But yeah, because then Ava passed out at the pier and that's when Kiki and Silas found her. So mm-hmm. that was Silas. And he was like, where's the baby? And then Kiki's like, oh. Yeah, you're not pregnant anymore. Where's the baby? Which, I mean, in all fairness, she was wearing a big dress. Not a big dress, but she was wearing right, a dress that very easily could have. Right. That was cute, though. She was like, oh, you have a sister. Blah, blah, blah. That was right. Nice right. Daughter moment. So I guess we're on to Thursday's episode, which was June 29th, 2015. Yep. There was Rick. We were talking about him the other day, too. Mm-hmm. Married to Nina. I just said again, I love that a lot of what we just talked about with Dante is being shown. And it fits because Sonny, Carly, and now Sonny's kids. Like, it all... No, fits together. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they were listening to us and planned it that way. Absolutely. <laughs> of course they did. I did say that this is when Luke was on his way out and his last adventures bringing everyone from his past. And it was actually one of the last storylines that my grandma and I would have talked about because less than a month later she was gone. Mm-hmm. And so that made me really sad because I'm like rewatching it and I'm like, I remember talking about this with her and being like, oh my gosh, they brought back Holly, you know, and they, why they bring back Jennifer? And then it's like, okay, they're making sure that he's seeing everybody that was significant. And I was talking to my aunt about it the other day. And I was like, you know, I actually don't know when my gram started watching. I was like, maybe she just couldn't live in a world that didn't have Luke on GH. And Aww. so she, she pieced out before she had to know. Cause I know that she loved Luke. So that's so sweet. It just made me really sad. Cause I missed her. And she'd be like, what the heck's going on right now? <laughs> This would be good conversations. So I was changed so much. Oh my god! Uh, another gross thing was Rick being with Nina and then kissing all over Madeline. Oh, oh, that was so gross. Another mother daughter set. Rick yes, left, and Rick slept with her because he also slept with Sam and Alexis. Mm-hmm. No wonder he and Elizabeth get along so well. Yeah, maybe that's why they can't last though. Elizabeth doesn't have a mom around for him to hook up with. And Liz never slept with Sonny. No. No. But still, you know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Because they both sleep with the entire family. Right. So there's why they don't work together. And this is when he was married to Nina. Right. Like, right. Because he was trying to get her money. Like, I understand the whole scheme, but That's ew. gross. Just ew. And you're taking advantage of a woman that just came out of a coma. I mean, it's Rick. You don't really expect that much more of him. Right. But especially for Madeline as a mother to do that to her own daughter. Yeah. That's horrible. Like, you inflicted that level of pain on your kid. You know, she's like, all right, you're in a sensitive state. Let's see how much I can mess with you and get you to do whatever I ask. Right. I need some money. And for money. Like, and that's it. It's it's horrible. Horrible, horrible. Right. We saw how horrible she was in the episode before that, even though it was a whole year beforehand. Whenever she helped Nina get that baby, acted like, oh, okay, that's your baby. And then as Nina was talking to the baby like it was her baby... She pointed out, well, you know, that's not really your right. kid. <laughs> right. Quit trying to hurt her even more when she's in an emotional, not correct yes. state of mind. And back to Luke real quick. Laura in leather. She looked so good in that episode. Amazing. So good. That was all like, I was Jeannie thinking. Jeannie Francis is gorgeous, but like she looked so tough and so gorgeous. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. Because, yeah, as they were talking, I was like, you look so good. You should redo that you look so good. right like let's get the mayor in leather yes know? once her re- right, re-election she's campaign. wearing like grandma outfits right she can still be rocking yeah she's still really like fit and i'd be showing that off mm-hmm. yeah i don't care how old i was i'd be showing that off so the reason that we even saw this episode though was because of sunny's kids mm-hmm. which they were talking about so this is when ava was pretending to be her sister denise demuccio who came back to poor charles after ava was presumed dead And so Denise wanted to spend time with Avery. Yes. She was a little over the top. I know her character was supposed to be over the top. But when she called Michael and was like, I almost feel like I'm her mother. Who would actually say that? Right. Even if she felt that way or thought that. Especially since she doesn't have one now. Like, come on. Exactly. Yeah. That was whatever. I also noted that Brian Craig looked like he was going to crack after asking Denise and Franco if they should get a room. (laughs) Because, like, he had his mouth cut, covered and stuff. And I looked at it. I was like, oh, it looks like you're going to crack up. 
But then this was when Michael had custody of Avery and he gave her back to Sonny. Yeah, I also thought that was the scene that was overdone. <laughs> but Maurice Bernard was so cute. He was so cute with her. Like, can I have a snack? I love that she faked yes. it out with it too. Yes, so cute. I liked all the emotions behind that scene and that he was forgiving and he was giving her back because that's where she belonged and blah, blah, blah. But it felt like he said goodbye to her like 1,700 times. Mm-hmm. You're not going to never see her again. Right, you can come over tomorrow. It'll be fine. Yeah. But they were strained with their relationship at that point. So it was... I feel like you'd say goodbye to the baby before you took her over there. Mm -hmm. Not in front of everyone to spill all that out. And then that was the first time that he and Sabrina slept together. Yeah. Okay, that's a really weird thing to come Mm -hmm. home from and be like... I didn't like him with Sabrina. I didn't get it. it. They didn't have the chemistry. Like, her and Patrick... You saw it build up. I wish that had worked out. Yes. And you wanted them together and they flirted and she was like Mm kind of awkward and he brought her out a little and they they like worked. Her and Michael were just boring. I thought that they would be really, really, really good friends. Yes. That would work. And sure. And maybe be the, okay, let's go out drinking and cry together. And then they wind up right. being more than friends. But for that to be the launching point, mm-hmm. just even that felt sex scene was like weird. Well, yeah, because you're already, you're like, okay, you just left the baby. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't like it. I'm with you. It was like awkward. It. Unless we watched the whole leading up to that again, you know, it wasn't, I don't remember liking it even back then. So I don't, I don't know think that's going to change it. I remember Carly absolutely hated her. And I'm like, who hates Sabrina? Right. How do you hate Sabrina? Do you remember that? Like she told her off. Carly like yelled at Sabrina. Yeah. I'll have to, go back we'll have to find, find it. it. Yeah. Oh, and this was whenever the stuff with um, Dante and Valerie started. Yes. And I do owe Valerie a slate apology because she did back off the first time. She did. And I always felt like she was trying to seduce him and put doubt in there. So the first time she walked away, like she should have, she should have been smart enough not to go back. So, And Dylan wasn't as sleazy as I thought he was with not wanting Lulu to talk to Dante and kind of put that doubt in their marriage. Yeah, but I think he was happy that it was failing or hoping that it would fail but I don't think he was trying to make it fail as much right he wasn't trying to be an active participant in the yeah. reason but right. was kind of sitting there like waiting it out like exactly. all right so if this goes south right we're good talking about it it felt a little more malicious before like no, no don't call him like let's put that doubt in I don't think that that's really this is why I watch YouTube when I do my research okay well, so I'll apologize to both of them if I made them sound more. But it is because like you read it and you're like, oh my were. gosh, like that was. Hor-. But then you watch it and you're like, oh, OK. Well, that's because I think I remember more than I do. Sometimes. I know. <laughs> and I don't want to get stuck like you did. How long did we do Dante for? Because you needed to keep watching. I still need to finish that. <laughs> well, it's funny because I was watching something the other day and my husband asked me, he's like, so are you still watching Dante? I was like, no, we already recorded that. It's already done. So I didn't finish, but I'm like, we talked about it. So now I'm good. There you so go. I listened to our episodes and I was like, got it. You're welcome. There you go. So Friday 2, 26, 16. Wasn't on Hulu. I'm glad that you pointed that out just so that I had the heads up because I had watched Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday already, mm-hmm. and hadn't obviously looked for Thursday, Friday, because why wouldn't they be on there? So right. thanks for letting me know. Yep, my pleasure. I found it on Daily Motion. That's where I watched it too. Cool. Nathan ha- was in the hospital and shot. Mm-hmm. And I love Nina saying that she doesn't understand German. Yes, that was so cute. Over and over and over. Yep. That was cute. I do- I've come around to the new Nina, but watching these old ones mm-hmm. really make me miss her, just because. I agree. They're two totally different characters. They are. They are. Yeah, she definitely... She just seemed to have a better sense of humor. I don't know if they wrote it different or if she just portrays it different or what. Right. But it was more... Flighty-ish? Yeah. I I feel like someone that we would hang out with and talk to. And the new Nina is too put together, so... Yeah, they need to get her to be a hot mess real quick. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, hopefully when they come back, it'll change some. But yeah, she still just feels too businesswoman all the time. For us. Right. Yeah, they haven't really taken her out other than ditching Valentine and going off with Jax. Right. But other than that, she hasn't she hasn't been drugged, she hasn't tripped, she hasn't <laughs> stolen any babies, she hasn't <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Just take her out and let her have a drink and relax a little. Yeah. Show some more personality. And Nathan denying Maxie's proposal and then saying Claudette 
Claudette's name as yes. it drifts off. Dun, dun, dun. We talked about Claudette mm-hmm. back in January 9th. We talked about Claudette because she was being talked about quite a bit. So we thought she was coming mm-hmm. back. So if you need to know who Claudette is, go back and listen to January 9th, Poor Charles 411. I'll put the link in the show notes. Which means if we watch the next day or two, that would be when he tries to say it was his dog. Right. Which is the dumbest cover up ever. Right. I thought it was cute that she proposed to him. Yeah. Because that doesn't feel like a very Maxie-ish Mm-mm. thing to do. So good job, Maxie. That was cute. And then the rest of the episode was really just Morgan's breakdown and he was going to jump and then he didn't jump. And that was a really good scene with Sunny climbing up on the ledge with him. Fantastic. That was awesome. They really did a good job of Morgan and Sonny connecting over, not even connecting really, but I mean, Sonny being a father to a child that also struggles with the same things that he struggles with. You know, it's, I know it's totally selfish, but I'm always grateful that my daughter that does struggle with the same issues as Sonny can get her help somewhere else. And then I don't identify with all of that Mm -hmm. because I feel like I project too much of myself into it. Right. Because you'd be like, well, this works for me. Why doesn't it work for you? Which is the worst thing that you can do for anyone that struggles with mental health is so-and-so. Exactly. Exactly. Because I know nothing about it. What I've learned. Other than what you've observed from her. Yeah. As we're learning it, we're learning it. And then I can only apply it to that. I mean, I know I struggle with that. Both of my older girls have ADHD, but they present it in two completely different ways. Yeah. The older one just can't pay attention. Like she's easily, you know, taken to a different track. So medication works really well for her and that's what's worked best for us and that's fine. But for Megan, she's more hyperactive. And so sometimes she's just like so in your face and all over the place that I'm like, why aren't you acting the same way that your sister does? Right. You know, we'll try it on the same medication, blah, blah, blah. But her It doesn't mean it's not the same. No. You just you can't treat it the same. It's not the same. So especially with more severe issues. I'm really glad that I have no basis to jump off of. Yeah. But for Sonny, that was awesome that he could reach to that place and say, I've dealt with these same demons. We can get to the other side. Step down. Let's talk it through. Mm-hmm. Or sure, I'll just end it with you. Right. Which was... That I was felt bad for Michael. Blow. Right. Like you, he should just seek therapy after that because seeing your dad and your brother on the ledge Oh my God. Mm-hmm. I can't do I want to know. In and Andre life, did a really good job too. Like the things that he he's was saying. He's such a good therapist. I, mm-hmm. I want him around. I want to know in real life how far out that ledge is. Oh, probably not that far. I'm sure it's probably not, but it just, it seems so scary. Like the top of the built of the mm-hmm. hospital. Oh my gosh. Mm-mm. I don't like heights. So that would freak me out. Yeah. Me neither. That would not have been good. Yeah. But no, Andre did awesome realistically talking about mm-hmm. what else could come. I felt bad for Carly, though, whenever she washed her hands so bad that she needed them bandaged. Yeah. I, oh, I wrote something about that. I said, Laura Wright gives so much emotion, even with hand washing. Yeah. But I mean, really, she was trying to get them clean because she had the blood of Kiki Mm -hmm. on them. And I thought it was funny that she took her rings off, though. I'm not one of those people who ever take off my rings, but her rings still had blood on them. So those still needed washed. Too. Yeah, but she might not have wanted to get... I take my rings off all the time. Do you? I have them off right now. I have one. I bought a little rubber thing from... Like, it's a yeah, it's rubber... Because, yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you're working out and stuff like that, I wear it a lot. But, yeah, I do. Hmm. When but I was also, married, I never took my stuff off to, like, wash fingers and get, stuff. I've had them resized now probably four times. Oh, wow. Because my fingers get so, like, swollen and then skinny and swollen and skinny that... And I'm just done with it. So, like, when I'm going out like when I go to work or something I do mm-hmm. but like when I'm meeting new clients I always put on my it's just like one of those little silicone bands that you can get on Amazon yeah but huh, yeah I don't know I wear this the mo- probably the most just because it's hmm. I don't know but I, I mean I would take them off because I wouldn't want them to fall down the drain that makes sense I guess mine were never they were never too tight but they were never that loose mm-hmm. that I ever had to think about it and so I just I've never been in that I can habit. spin mine so I spin it around my hand so uh, yeah mine doesn't no mm-hmm. so I mean obviously hers is like a million dollar ring you wouldn't want to drop it down the drain but I just thought it was funny in that moment that she was still like oh yeah take these off but they have blood on them you're gonna yeah. have to wash this too another note about Carly was I said you know how it's the big controversy what does Sunny ship yes i feel like this is the closest that we ever got to because carly said it was those guns sunny said that it wasn't his shipment he didn't say but i don't deal in guns he said but it wasn't my shipment and then she talks about how she's always accepted his business so was this the closest thing to him but i can't really picture him dealing guns but what else would he deal i know there's nothing else i don't know 
drugs are guns. And we know it's not drugs. I thought it was like diamonds, like blood diamonds and stuff, which is still gross, but not as harmful. True. Uh, that's not true because they're called blood diamonds for a reason, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I just always assumed it was guns. I don't know. I mean, it's coffee. But that was the other reason. <laughs> but remember, because I, I think I said that on something that I thought it was diamonds because it would be easier to hide in coffee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did say that. You did say it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, you said that. I didn't go there. But you agreed. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then I just wrote Paul Hornsby. You know, I mean, that such was such a jerk. So sleazy. And I know every time we say his name, that's my only reaction. But yeah, I said Ava working with Paul. Mm-hmm. But he's just so, ugh. The last thing that I had was that they just need to do a mental health special. Oh, that would be so good. They should dedicate yeah. an entire week <gasps> to just the different things that they've done highlighting mental health. That would be awesome. It would be. I hope they're listening and take that suggestion. Well, that now they're going to possibly be, we, I, we're just going to get more episodes. So. Yeah, no, I've seen the rumors on Facebook that say they're starting back mid-July, but being that... I can only judge from where we are, and our county shut down again for the week, so... We're not shut down as much. Uh-huh. We shut down for the week. They're asking you to stay at home. Right. It's not an order, but they're still asking you to stay at home, and a lot of stuff shut back down. And either in places that were originally open have had to shut back down because mm-hmm. of cases in their business. So... I saw something on Facebook this morning that California churches have been asked to not sing. Oh, wow. What's that? It is. See, I don't know how they're going to start back up. I hope they do. I totally hope they do. But I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. So I guess it's time for... Reality check. For reality. You had a good reality. Go. I did. So Thursday morning, I took a look at the calendar and realized that we didn't have anything going on for Friday and Saturday. And so I decided to book a little trip to Gettysburg, which is only about three hours away and my husband and I have been there many times, but we've never taken the kids. It's always been, he proposed out there too. Uh, so my husband used to be a Civil War reenactor. So before anyone thinks that that's disrespectful and all that, like it, it really means a lot to us. Like we were actually married by the chaplain from, he's an ordained minister too. So we're legit. But the guy who <laughs> You're not going to come back in a couple years. Oops, no. that wasn't a real marriage. But the guy who actually married us was one of the chaplains from one of the units that oh, like he wow. knew. So... Gettysburg means a lot to us. And I mean, it's in the days. So the battle took place July 1st, 2nd and 3rd. And they actually took place on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So those days actually lined up. And I took a look and all of the typical festivities that they have, because it's usually absolutely insane to go during that time. And it wasn't. So found a nice cheap room on the end of edge of town. And we did the auto tour which is nice because they have an app that you just basically, they tell you to drive to like certain areas. And it was nice. So it was on our phone because you can buy the CDs and everything. But with it being on the phone, I could connect it through the Bluetooth. But then oh nice, we got out and were able to go. So like there would be certain spots that it said, and now you're looking to the left and you see this or whatever. So we actually just got out of the car and stood there and turned to the left or walked to oh nice a little ways to where. So, I mean, it was... We were all socially distanced. We had pizza at our favorite pizza place that had plexiglass between the booths, but still, it was actually really good. So they had plexiglass up, but they also still were skipping oh, tables. Oh, wow. And they took out all the tables that were in the middle, so it was only booths were available, but like our booth had plexiglass behind it, but the booth behind us was not allowed to be sat at. And then, so they nice. had a really good system set up, too. Yeah. We did go to the visitor center, but they have time tickets, so they're really able, easily able to control how many people are in the facility at a time and they have the six feet markers mm. set apart and everything. So they did a really good job. I definitely feel safe that we went and it was just nice to be able to get away overnight real quick. Right. Because, you know, like everyone else, we're all stuck at home. Mm-hmm. But I mean, overall, and then we drove home, went straight to my in-laws for some swimming and I was passed out before eight o'clock last night. So no fireworks <laughs> for me. My poor husband wound up sleeping downstairs in our basement because I was just, I was relaxing on our bed and I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, sprawled out on, like, I wasn't even (laughs) under the covers. I was just on top. No sheet. Like I love to snuggle with a blanket. Mm -hmm. Not even that. So, I mean, nothing was waking me up. So that was about it. So what'd you do? You had kidless. Uh, Yeah, I was kidless all week. I didn't do anything, which was awesome, actually. Good. I had all kinds of plans in my head and then I would wake up and be like, no, I went and spent time with my mom and my brother. 
Last night, I went over to my sister's house. We did a little cookout, let off some fireworks, just kind of hung out. And the kids, I do not have them back yet, but I've talked to them all week, which was nice because I like that they missed me Mm -hmm. (laughs) and had to call me. And they were FaceTiming me and showing me how nice the beach house that they rented was. And, you know, they collected shells on the beach and whatever. And Madeline was super excited because she loves seafood and she went to the seafood buffet. And between her dad, her stepmom, her brother and her, they had three pounds of crab. And she was so cute, so excited to tell everyone. She was talking to my brother um, on FaceTime and she was like, we ate three pounds of crab and I brought the little clippy thingies home and was pinching my sisters with it oh my gosh and it was just so cute so I'm really glad that they got this experience and from what I heard there was not that many people at the beach so they were socially distancing and wearing their masks and doing all that kind of stuff and I always get scared because Madeline is so pale she's like me like we burn if we're out in the sun for two seconds and they did a good job of keeping her all slathered up so she did not get burnt so I'm glad they're home I can't and wait she's to see so them, petite but. I cannot picture I want to see a picture of her with three pounds of crabs in front of her <laughs> I will face. ask him if he has a picture of that because she seriously she can put away seafood we do shrimp at most of the family uh, birthday parties mm-hmm. and she's the first one who's like loaded up and like Wait a minute, Madeline, you have to let other people else need to get some. Yeah, that whole so plate is not yours, but she loves it. And it, it was really extra special because, you know, with her being the youngest, she just kind of gets tossed along with sure. everyone else. But um, all the other girls, her stepsisters and her sisters, don't like seafood. So they stayed home with their grandma. And so it was just the four of them that went. She was the only little kid. Yeah. Yeah. So extra special. Every picture, every FaceTime, every everything. She was smiling ear to ear. Just so happy. So it was her first real vacation with them. So I'm happy for her. So cute. So, but yeah, I'm glad. I can't wait to get them back. But at the same time, totally enjoyed the quietness. My house Mm -hmm. was so quiet. It's very nice. So, yeah, that was it. Well, they'll be back soon enough for it to be. And then I'll be complaining that it's loud. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'll take it, though. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess that's it for this week. Join us on Thursday as we talk about Carly and Franco. That's going to be fun. That is. So, have a good week. And we'll meet with the peer. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 